that just makes me happy that you mentioned that because it's so true and so important and we need to support the community and you. Okay, uh, and each other. What's the best time to take, from Mildred, what's the best time to take digestive enzymes? Depends on what you're using them for. If you're using them for, uh, to help you with not, not to have symptoms, uh, SIBO symptoms, digestive symptoms, then you take them at the beginning of a meal, like with a meal. Uh, you can take them towards the end of the meal as well. Like you can even split your dosing just because, you know, you're chewing, you're eating, it's taking time. You might want to get another dose down in there for the stuff that's come later. Uh, but you take them in between meals. So away from food entirely when you're using them for antibiofilm. So enzymes can break biofilms um, and they also are anti-inflammatory. So when you take digestive enzymes away from meals, you're getting the anti-inflammatory effect and the antibiofilm effect. For that reason, sometimes people take enzymes between meals for anti-inflammatory effect, like to help their joint pain, and then they feel sick because it broke the biofilm and let out all these microbes, and then the immune system goes, ah, and attacks it. So if that's ever happened to you, that's probably why. Because of that, so that's a great. A lot of people eat yogurt so that they can get the probiotics from the yogurt. So, I wanted to find out if you had any strains that you prefer for 24-hour yogurt, and maybe you could explain what 24-hour yogurt is in case somebody doesn't know. Yeah, so you can make um, yogurt at home, and you can make it lactose-free if you ferment it for 24 hours or longer, but 24 hours is sufficient, more than sufficient. Uh, because this, this all came about because there didn't used to be lactose-free yogurt in the stores. Now there is. There's all kinds of lactose-free yogurt brands in the stores. And so and the normal yogurts, what they would do is they'd only ferment to about six hours, and that doesn't break apart the lactose. And, and how, does this, how is this working? What is this all about? It's the fact that you put bacteria in there, and then they break apart lactose, which is a double sugar, and they break it apart, and then they eat the single sugars. And so they're turning the, the milk into yogurt and making it lactose-free. So uh, if you would just do it at home, you could fer ferment it long enough. Now, what most of the commercial ones do is they add lactase enzyme into their yogurt, and that breaks it apart. But there are, um, there are a few brands that you can find in health food stores uh, that are 24-hour yogurt. And so they've, they've done it by fermentation process. The benefit when you do that is you increase the amount of probiotics. They grow larger. There's more of them. And it's cheaper. It's a lot cheaper. So if you're, you know, <laughs> if, if you're budget conscious, you, it's a much better deal to make your own. And you get more probiotics. So the strains that I recommend are just lactobacillus, um, acidophilus, and bifidus. The, the brand that I, I used, I, I experimented with making my own homemade yogurt for years. I tried all different starters and everything, and then I started teaching that recipe around, and now you know, all my colleagues teach that recipe. It's so basic, and I just use yogurt. Yogurt May is the starter. It's like yogurt, but at the end, M-E-T, like gourmet. <laughs> yogurt May. And that's sold in my local health food store, and um, you can, I think you can get, order it on Amazon even. 